We were supposed to understand these things in the practice of Christianity. But as the case became, Christianity became the religious wing of the divided Roman Empire. So what we are seeing today is the extent of the divided Roman Empire. Now, if you go to history, if you go to history, people that kept history said Roman Empire collapsed in, I think it was the 14th century, 1476 or thereabouts. That's when they said Roman Empire collapsed. But Roman Empire did not collapse, in my opinion. From Daniel chapter 8, I realized that Roman Empire how did that is the final empire of the beast has been evolving yes you're right september 1476 1476 was when history it, said roman empire it failed lost. that was when they said roman empire failed but that's not true yeah. roman empire did not fail roman empire evolved now you need to understand the origin very good as i spoke now you went to one search you went to go and do your research yes good yes ma very good that is what the church should have been since anybody will talk you must go check whether that's the person they talk true that's the Berean church do you remember Berean jews in acts chapter um yes Acts chapter 17. in fact yes, I, yeah the, the nobility search. the nobility of the church is defined the by this church yes this thing what you do now by that's how you know the noble church the truth. Yeah. that's how you know the noble church mm -hmm. they went to go and search scriptures to see what this guy says is it true they did it for Paul. They did it for Paul. Now, if you study Daniel chapter 8, where it speaks about the ram and the goat. Are you there? <coughs> yes. As you're speaking, I'm just I'm confirming all your sense. Okay? Now, Daniel 8, we may not be able to read it through, but you begin to see Daniel, yeah. who was then in service to Belshazzar. Belshazzar was the last king of the new babylonian empire so you recognize that the babylonian empire was failing already fading away from the scene and then the next empire was not yet determined but daniel was serving that king and while he was serving that king he said he saw a ram standing by the ulai canal ulai is in the region of um persia present day iran iran yeah so Daniel in that text under the Babylonian Empire to, told us that the next empire to come to the scene is from Persia, right there. He said this ram had two horns. Two horns are two symbols of authority. You know that after Babylon, the next empire that came was the Medo Persian Empire. Right? Now, after this ram, came it, it, it flew to the west he it, it, it rained nobody could save the nations that this ram trampled upon suddenly he saw another goat jagged goat rise from the west and then flew across the world so much that it was like his leg did not touch the ground that was talking about this animal he said, talking about this animal, I don't know why you're calling me now. I shouldn't have a call now. He said, said the goat which had one very large horn between his eyes headed towards the two horn ram that I had seen standing beside the river, rushing at him at a range. The goat charged furiously at the ram and struck the ram, ram breaking of its horns now the ram was helpless and the goat knocked him down and trumped him no one could rescue the ram the goat's power. beautiful so you see that this goat became the world power it destroyed the two horns of the ram that means it toppled the medopatian empire destroyed their two kings now mm. you look at this goat this goat is the grecian empire the horn oh, the Greece. The Greece. that's Greece the horn between his eyes 
is the first king. Who was that king? Na um, Alexander the Great. Okay. So you see, Daniel talked about Alexander the Great. Do you understand what I'm saying? Daniel yes, talked okay. about Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great became very big. Now, you will recognize that at the height of his power, the horn between his eyes broke. It was broken up, yeah. And then four horns from his place rose up. Yeah. Now, that four horns that rose from the Grecian Empire became the Greco-Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire, they didn't fight against the Grecian Empire. The Grecian Empire evolved into the Roman Empire. Okay, your wife is talking there. Okay. Okay. So you begin to see. You begin to see. Uh, her voice is loud and it's coming into what we are doing here. <coughs> so you begin to see that the 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 Grecian Empire was divided into four, yes. forming the base of the Roman Empire. Okay. So that scripture told me that the Roman Empire is divided into four expressions. Yeah. Yeah. So over the time of the evolution of the Roman Empire, it's going to evolve into four. Four different phases. Now, let's go back to the etymology of this, this Grecian division, the Grecian division. There were four kings who were four military generals in Alexander's army that now began to determine the jurisprudence of the empire that Alexander left, which became the Greco-Roman Empire. I can't remember their names now, but I captured them, this, the names of these kings, in my recently published book right they had four kings and these four kings in fact let me say the name of the kings these four kings were kings of four distinct regions of the world you know Grecian Empire dominated over the whole world right and then when Alexander died, four kings representing the four regions of the so world. We had, we had the uh, fleet to mark Egypt. Plot, we had Plot, 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 Plot to mark Egypt. Yes. Seleucid, Mesopotamia. Yes. Central Asia and Atalid, Atalonia. And then the Atagonia, Mesito. Those were the four regions right four regions where the, where those kings supervised okay let me let me tell you the modern name of these four regions the first region was greece and macedonia the second region was syria the third region was egypt egypt remained that's why you see plo 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 let me to to let me is egypt and then you have the the last one Lysi Marcos in, in Asia. That's Asia. Yeah. So there are four regions yeah. here. Greece and Macedonia, Syria, Egypt, and Asia. Now, these four regions provided the foundation for the evolution of the Roman Empire. That's exactly what I'm saying. As the Roman Empire is evolving, the jurisprudence, power to judge the world, was transferred from this, this, from each of these four, from Greece and Macedonia to Syria, and then to Egypt, and then to Asia. I am looking at the spirit of the operation of the evolutionary elements of this empire. Am I making sense to you? Yes. All right. Now. I want you to recognize that the spirit of Greece and Macedonia was the spirit that was governing Caesar when Christ was born. What happened when Christ was born? Caesar became king of the entire world. He now 
colonized Israel. Do you remember? And then yeah. set up Herod. And then it was when Herod was king, that was when Christ was born. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are seeing the, the expression of Greece and Macedonia. Yeah. During the time of Christ's birth, we're seeing the expression of Greece and Macedonia. Now, if you go to Daniel 2, you will see that when Daniel was talking about that image, Daniel said, it is, it is in the time of those kings that God will set up his kingdom on the earth. If you have read Daniel 2, you will hear the yes, scripture sir. say, it is in the time of the Roman Empire that God will set up his kingdom, up his kingdom on the kingdom. earth. On and the setting up of his kingdom started by the birth of the king. That means it is, it is under the first expression of the Roman Empire that the king is born. Now, when the king was born, the king started to promote his kingdom. People wanted to make him king. He shoved himself away from them. But he didn't change the fact that he wanted to judge the earth because his purpose is to judge the earth. Luke chapter 4 verse 43. The king told us his purpose. I was sent to preach the kingdom of God to towns. I was sent to preach, practice and teach the kingdom of God to towns. That is the work of Christ. Both the head and his body. But Christ wanted to do this governing, this preaching of the kingdom of God to towns. He wanted to do it through a new creation. That was why he ran away from the Jews who wanted to make him king. Before you come into his kingdom, you must be born again. And at that time, those people were not born again. So <clears throat> he ran away from them until the fullness of time came for him to produce his body. Am I making sense to you? Mm -hmm. So under the Roman Empire, what happened? They put Christ to death. The death of Christ was a fantastic opportunity for God to set up Christ's body. And indeed, God fulfilled that promise in Acts chapter 2. Under the Roman Empire, God gathered the people in Jerusalem. Disciples were gathered, they waited, he poured out his spirit, and then the church is born. The church was born under the evolution of the Roman Empire. Now, the church began to promote his own government. Christ is king, Yeshua is Lord. That's what the church was saying. If you go to Acts chapter 17, now, Let's go to Acts chapter 17. Read New Living Translation because it opens up that picture where you now see the posture of the church in the first few years of the early church. Acts chapter 17. Acts 17. NLT. Yes. yes, that's what I always read. Beautiful. Oh, read verse, verse, verse 6 and 7. Okay, verse 6 and 7. So it says, please, um, not finding them there they dragged out Joson and some of the other believers instead took them before the city council Paul and Silas have caused trouble all over the world they shouted and now they are disturbing our city too mm -hmm. keep reading and Joson has welcomed them into his home they are all guilty of treason against caesar for they profess allegiance to another king named jesus do you see the posture of the early church yeah who was their allegiance to to king jesus that means jesus was king already yeah and when when they are moving into the nations promoting the kingdom of God where Jesus is king already they were guilty of treason against Caesar do you see the posture of the church do you see where we fell from they were guilty of treason that means they made attempt to topple the government of the day or they were declaring the government of the day as illegitimate why because they are king that sent them on the great commission go and make disciples of all nations wanted them to go and construct the nations go and produce nations that are obedient to king yeshua 
So many of them were killed because of this. Treasonable felony, even to the date, the penalty for treasonable felony is death. So that that sustains the decision by the Roman Empire to persecute and kill the church, murder the church. What did you see then? Killings. They were feeding them to lions. They were sawing them asunder. They would tie them to four horses, flog the horses as the horses run to either direction. These people are torn to pieces. Why? Because they dared to promote Yeshua is Lord. Yeshua is Lord means Yeshua is owner. Even, even Caesar must judge in alignment and obedience to Yeshua. That's what they meant. The governance of the Roman of the world is Christ's property. So you must govern the world, you must follow Christ's principles. The gospel then is a tool for government. So when you see blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, the beatitude, is King Yeshua's policy. It's not just a useless talk. The obedient church is using Matthew chapter 5 to judge their world. They are trying to produce a people that are pure in heart. They are trying to produce a nation that is pure in heart. They are trying to produce a nation that is thirsty and hungry for righteousness. <coughs> Am I making sense to you? Yes. Now, yes, you are. this was why they were killing the church. But it got to a time that the Roman Empire realized that killing the church did not help matters because the persecuting of the church empowered the church to promote their message. Yeah, made, made, made them to grow stronger. Made them stronger. Persecution has always united the church. Persecution has always matured the church. Persecution has always emboldened the church. Persecution is part and parcel of our life. That's why Paul was telling us that anybody that wants to follow Christ must be persecuted. So the second era of the evolution of the Roman Empire started. What was the face of the second era? Syria is the face of the second era of the manifestation or evolution of the Roman Empire. I'm talking about the Antichrist system. The Antichrist system was confessed before Christ system becomes prominent. God has ordained it. If you go to Daniel chapter 8 again, you will see that talking about the Antichrist from verse 12, the Antichrist will overthrow the truth. The overthrowing of truth is tied to the manifestation of the Antichrist. And that's why you saw that the Antichrist system blossomed. God allowed him to practice and prosper. How do you see it? He evolved from the Mesopotamian phase. He entered the Syrian phase. Why was the Syrian phase important? The Syrian phase is known for infiltration. Let's go back to the good old days when the children of Israel were in the promised land. But many of them had wandered away through the ministry of reprobate kings. And then Jeremiah came to cry to them that they will go into captivity. Do you remember? Many of them yeah. said Jeremiah is a useless man. They, they dug a well and threw Jeremiah inside the well. Crying prophet, you came to cry to us, you are a useless man. You don't know that we are the people of God. Indeed, true to the word of Jeremiah, Babylonian king came. When Babylonian king came, he destroyed the temple, poured salt on the ground, took the nobility of Israel in chains, or then Daniel, the Ezekiel, took them in chains to go and serve in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, after taking the men away from the land, the land of Israel was left with women and children. Women and children were left in the land with a desolate land. This man knew that women and children, it's not good for them to be alone. Eh? The man went to Assyria to bring Syrian men and gave them um, he gave them immigrant status in Israel. And these Syrian men married into the women 
and now gave birth to another breed of Jews. Those were the Samaritans. That's the origin of the Samaritans. The Samaritans that became a thorn in the flesh of the Jews. That was how they were born. Many of them. That's why you hear Paul. Paul was saying, I am a Jew in the house from the house of Benjamin. I'm a Jew of the Jews. A real Jew. I'm not a half caste. You see Christ talking about Samaritan woman, the good Samaritan. Why was Christ preaching about those messages? Christ was trying to preach peace to a people that have been fragmented because of the infiltration of Syrians. Am I making sense to you? It's still this spirit of Syria that the Antichrist used in the evolution of the Roman Empire. We saw the evolution between Macedonia and Syria. What did this evolution do? It dethroned that political church that they were persecuting. Effected the falling away and then infiltrated the church to produce a state-sponsored church. So you now saw Constantine rise around that era and working with a pope, one of the popes, Constantine made Christianity the state religion of Rome and then they stopped persecuting the church. So you see a lot of social engineering and infiltration happening in that era. They gave the church rights to practice religion. Now the church was not talking about what will make them treasonable felony uh, criminals. Do you understand? The church was not doing that anymore. The church started producing a people that were compliant to the evol evolved Roman Empire. Am I making sense to you? Uh -huh. We now saw separation of church and state, Catholic church now started to run the world. That was the second phase of the beast. When the Catholic church was running the world, Christianity became a state religion. Catholicism became the state religion. In fact, they started the war of the cross that took the world into the dark age. So the dark age, Syria, was the exile of God's, God's people. God's people were still there, but God's people had fallen away. God ordained that his people would fall away and enter what I call the remnant mode. It was the remnant mode that we saw in Babylon when Israel was inside captivity, but God was still speaking through Daniel, remnant mode, speaking through Ezekiel, remnant mode. God has always sustained the remnant mode in the church today in every generation leave some people alive to his will alive to his plan alive to his program do you understand what i'm saying irrespective of the fact that the enemy had taken over we are seeing the evolution of the roman empire today from macedonia we have captured syria and in syria you saw an infiltrating arm of the roman empire rise as the papacy they took the place of god took the church, hijacked the church, and then formed another church. This church became high-handedness in much of the, high-handed, I beg your pardon, in much of the era of the Catholic church, much to the dismay of some of the remnant people inside that system. By, elect, by the name, a lecturer, by the name Martin Luther. So we are seeing almost 300 years to the Protestant Reformation. What we are seeing now is the Protestant Reformation. But allow me to tell you that the Protestant Reformation, despite the fact that many Christians who have been taught Christian history, despite the fact that they feel that the Protestant Reformation was good because it was a breakout of the Catholic Church, I am made to understand that the Protestant Reformation was as evil as the rise of the Catholic Church because it produced the foundation for the third phase of the evolution of the beast system. A system that was free from the Roman Empire, but it was it started with disguise and deception as something that was ordained by God, but at the end you see that it's now proclaiming freedom from God himself. It's proclaiming freedom from God now. Something that started proclaiming freedom from the Roman Empire. They ran, they, we had the, 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 divide, the, the children of the Catholic Church. All the Martin Luther, the head of the Methodist Church, head of the Baptist Church, head of the Anglican Church. 
they are the Britons, British, the British and Americas, and they are the people I'm talking about, children of Edom. We are looking at Germany. We are looking at uh, they came out from the Roman Empire, broke out of the Roman Empire, right? And then they ran into the Americas. But when they were running away, they took the model of the Roman Empire. That's why we must be careful about the Achans that we have in our midst. You, you, God told you to destroy something, but you took the life of that thing and ran around with it. So we should not make the mistake when God is calling us out of the system. We should not follow the model of the system. The Methodist Church or the children of the Catholic Church, they took up the model of the Catholic Church. What is this model? The clergy laity model. Clergy for the pastors, laity for the congregation. They took that model and they just continued it wherever they went to. Am I making sense to you? But you see, when they left this place, they went to the Americas, they trampled on the in, indigenous people in the Americas. I came to Canada to recognize that there are indigenous people in Canada. The people that had the land before the Europeans came. They are in America too. There were people in this Western Hemisphere. But these people, I don't know why I will come to understand the anointing is teaching me that these people, the way God calls them in his own mind, God calls them the remnants of Edom. <coughs> if, if you read Amos chapter 9, you will see a phrase called the remnant of Edom. And these people, the salvation of these people is tied to the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David. The rebuilding of the tabernacle of David is symbolic of the restoring of the church. That means when the church is restored, God will inspire a movement that will redeem, save those indigenous nations. <coughs> we still have indigenous people in Africa, all them Biafra, all them Ambazonia. All of these people were suffering before because of the this people who ran to America to form democracy and then I brought democracy back to Africa and started colonizing. Well, how, do, how, do, how do you mean uh, Biafra? Biafra, those people that you call Biafra today. Mm. They have lost their identity. They have lost their... That's what is happening to people in the First Nations in Canada. So you see a first world and third world expression of the same thing. As the Western people were rising, they were colonizing other nations, and then they were trampling on their culture, their values. They were tramp, tramp because of Westernization. Uh -huh. Am I making sense to you? Yes. Now, where's the root of this thing? The root started when Europeans ran into America. They were running from the Catholic Church, but they ran with the model of the Catholic Church, and they trampled on the people, and they now developed the, the foundation of democracy. Where did they get democracy from? From Greece. So you see that the divided Roman Empire was operating with Grecian principles. The world order that you know today, Roman world order, is not unique to Romans. Romans, they developed the foundation, the systems and institutions of Alexander the Great, and they are using it now to dominate the world. So what you are looking at now is the evolution of socialism. Because you saw from Alexander socialism, you now saw the Roman Empire's brand of socialism. Then you see the Catholic socialism. And, and in the evolution of this system, they said that they are destroying socialism. They are producing capitalism instead. But you see socialism is rising again. So the foundational flare that is running, economic system that is running, is socialism. Socialism is the system of the beast. If you want to study Karl Marx, you have to go and know that Karl Marx was an, an expression of the Antichrist. And it's the principles of Karl Marx that we are seeing today. Now they have updated it and they have added AI and artificial intelligence and technology to it, science to it. But the foundation is the mind of the beast. And the mind of the beast has an economic expression in its core is socialism they might they might have brought in the western side 
to promote capitalism. And you see, this capitalism also and socialism is finding its way in, into our religion. Christian leaders today, Christianity is a capitalist religion. Christianity, um, Christianity approves of the richest. And Christianity is also partisan. That's why you see Igbo church, Yoruba church, uh, racist church. In Canada here, yeah, you have racist Christians. They are Christians, but they are racist. You never see a black man talk in that place. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. It, uh, it approves of a particular elite. In Nigeria, you see Igbo church, Yoruba church. Uh, do you understand? It starts a, a, a expression of socialism. And then when you look at the structure of the church, the elite in the church are the ones that have the everything. The elite in the church are the ones that have, that's the socialist idea. The elite, the elite is the, the, the GO is the elite, is the chief, uh, chief elite. Is in the have the universities, is in the have the hospital. Is it does it? That is an antichrist thing, but it runs in the spirit of the age. Socialism. Am I making sense to you? This yes. is actually the expression of the antichrist system. It re built up into the uh, the Anglo American pseudo pseudo means hidden false yes. pseudo socialist capitalist democratic system that have defined the order of the world. Now, <coughs> this Western Eastern dimension, the foundation was created before the popes rose to power in the Roman Empire. One of the Caesars divided the Roman Empire into two halves, the Eastern half and the Western half. He did this because he wanted the ease of government. He wanted the governance of that territory, the whole world, in that, the whole known world in that era. He wanted it to be easy, so he divided into two administrative units, the Western and the Eastern. But you see, this actually gave the foundation for the evolution of the world system because the larger world became Western world, and now we are going into the Eastern world, the era of the Eastern world. Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 talks about the rise of the kings from the East. Kings from the East will define systems and institutions that are Eastern. So in the world that you have known, where you see a pastor wear tie and suit, Western tie and suit, and start speaking all those American language, right? We are going into an era where the kings, the pastors and politicians, they will be dressing like Eastern monks. They will be following the traditions of the East. The economic system will be Eastern. And it is in the East you saw them deal with socialism. So if you listen to me, you realize that I've been saying socialism is coming back. You remember I've always been saying socialism is coming back. Socialism, communism is coming back to judge this world. Because the Western people believe that they have dealt with socialism when the Soviet Union failed. But you remember that in scripture, Revelation chapter 13, it was talking about the beast that was and was not and yet is. Do you remember that phrase? You would have seen it in Revelation 13. Yeah. <laughs> he talks about a beast that was and was not for an era it was cut off but yeah. it yet yeah. is that means it's, that it's still present we are looking at socialism right there in its three phases socialism was it was not when it was cut off because of the capitalist outshoot and then it yet is it came back again to judge the world. Listen to me very carefully. What I'm saying is very deep here. Very, very deep. Now, the era that that system was cut off, we saw the era of the blossoming of the Anglo-Americans in their capacity to judge the world. My brother, allow me to tell you that the Anglo-Americans, they came in the spirit of Egypt. Egypt is the third phase 
of the evolution of the beast system. Mm -hmm. That's why you see in their in their dollar bill, they have Egyptian symbolisms in it. Where did it come from? We are looking at the spirit of these people. The spirit of these people is Egypt. Who were the people that carried slaves in um, ships in the last 400 years? Who took slaves out of Africa? The Western. The Western world. We are looking at the spirit of Egypt. The spirit of Egypt, ah my God, their own is to deal on the souls of men. Slavery is their spirit. We think that America is a free world, but America is a, is a slavery system. You come into here and you are working, working, working. You are working from Kusam. You work your whole life, and at the end of the day, you pay your money back to the government. It's a slavery system that Canada and America is. You keep working. There's hard work in this place. And in the working that you are working, the system is meeting your needs, and you are forgetting God in the system. Anybody that says he's practicing Christianity here doesn't know God. Because we are looking at a system, a system that is that is a slavery system. It's a slavery system that we are seeing here. I just told you when I was talking to you um, not long ago about the LGBT level that is happening here. The height. When you see people saying they are celebrating nudity and they are riding bicycle, that one is even small. This one, they have defined the legislation. Despite the fact that there are churches everywhere. They have defined the entertainment. They have defined the news that you are listening to. They have defined the education of your children. They have defined your religious arrangement. Because in the churches now, you have that flag on the church. It's a gay compliant church. They have defined the books in your library because they are books, grooming books, so groom your children. And Christians are still there, that's what I'm saying. Now, gay, gay compliance means that uh, you have to allow them to come. Gay compliant means just the way you had COVID compliant. Uh -huh. Yes. Gay compliant is, is men, you are... Just they can come, right? They can govern, they are the people, they are the owner of the land. It's not the, uh, you have obeyed them. You have lined up with them. Come because God will save them. You understand? You don't understand what I'm saying. When you come, you will see what I'm saying. They are the owner of the world. They are the owner of the land. As long as they are not giving leadership role, because they need to get born again. My brother, they have they have the government. They have the education. They have the politics. In um in um what's it calling now? What are we saying now? Here in Canada, there was one man of God who wanted to follow the route of Elado Rotoye. I met this man of God. His name is Arthur Paloski. I know him personally. I know his passion. I know how he feels. I've shared my ideas with him. The man felt that he would go in through politics to do this thing. He was the head of the uh, political party here in Alberta. But this man was kicked out because of his bias to the gay nation. They kicked him out of that place. These people have power in the land. And this is the character that destroyed the, the Roman Empire. LGBT, the desire to knock anybody, knock any hole that you see. That's what destroyed the Roman Empire. It's still in the character of the evolution of this Roman Empire. The, the way that they want to show their freedom from God, this is how they want to show it, by promoting the LGBT legislation. Why do you think they came to Nigeria and they were telling Nigeria to pass it into law? Why? It's part of their democratization of the world, the discipline of the world. Go and make disciples of all nations. These are the people that have responded to it. That's why they can come to Africa and say, imbibe this thing into law. Imbibe it into law. If you don't, we'll not give you any, um, um, we'll not give you help. We'll not, beg your pardon, we'll not give you uh, loans. 
Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? We will not give you aid. Pass this thing into law. So when you see this thing, eh, me, I'm looking through it to see the character of the spirit. Is the character of the spirit of the age under the expression of the third phase of the Antichrist's face? So the Antichrist face has three phases. We have seen one, Greece and Macedonia. We have seen two, Syria. We are presently seeing the third one, Anglo-American democratic one. That's why you see down to the democratized nations, you will see Antichrist principles in their governments. Go and read them, Matthew chapter 5. Open Matthew chapter 5 from verse 33. Matthew chapter 5 from verse 33. Okay, I'm going there. Matthew 5, 33. You want to read it down to 37. Yeah. It says, You have also heard that our ancestors were told, You must not break your vows, and you must not carry out the vows you must carry out the vows you, you have made to the Lord. What was that? Who is, who is talking? Who is talking? The king is talking. Jesus. The king. Yeah. It's not just Jesus. It's the king of kings that is talking. He says, you have heard them say to men of old, fulfill your vows. Mm -hmm. All your vows that you have made to the Lord, fulfill them. But that old era ends with me. I, your king, says unto you. Continue reading. <coughs> I say unto you, do not make any vow, do not say, by heaven, or because heaven is God's throne, and do not say, by earth, because the earth is his footstool, and do not say, by Jerusalem, for Jerusalem is the city of the great king, and do not even say, by my head, for you can't turn one hair white or black. Okay. Just say simple, yes, I will. No, I won't. Anything beyond this is from the evil one. Now, Christ is telling you something. It's, it's about vows, right? It's NLT you are reading. Yeah. I want you to go and read that same yeah, scripture in KJV so you will now understand something clearer. KJV mm -hmm. is telling you something. From I say, un but I say unto you, read KJV. Read that scripture in KJV. Okay. KJV or NKJV? Which of them? KJV. KJV. I for it. I hardly use KJV. Uh, sorry. This is KJV. Okay, KJV. I have got it. So it says. Um, but I what? where Christ said, but I say unto you. Okay, so ye have heard that is said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say to you that whosoever is angry, okay, that, that's not what we read now. No, 33. But this is 33, okay, just one moment. Okay, so again, ye have heard that that it had been said by them of old, thou shalt not forswear thyself, mm. but shall perform unto the Lord thy oath. But I say to you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor for nor by the earth, for it is footstool, neither by Jerusalem. For it is the city of the great king. Neither shall thou swear by, by thy head, because thou canst make one hair white or black. But let your communication be ye, ye, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than this cometh from evil. So you see, the, what is the commandment that Christ is talking about here? That we should not make hasty vows. Okay, no, 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 no. 
King James Version says it, swear not at all. Swear. S-W-E-A-R. Swear. 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 Let's look at that. Swear not. Do not swear at all. When he told you whatever he wants you to do, he now says anything that tells you more than this comes from the evil one. So you see, the legal system under a democracy promotes that five-letter word, swearing. You want to appoint a politician, you do swearing in. You want to get married, you go and swear. Court wedding, you will swear. White wedding, you will make your vows. All of them is saying, this is what you will do. That they are using swear to uphold the legitimacy of the person's conduct in office. Commitment. Where the Christ says is coming from. In Christ's statement, in verse 37, what did Christ say about the origin of whoever says you should swear? In 37, okay, what did he say? The origin is king, now, Greek king. <coughs> whoever says you should swear, where is he from? Who is he from? Okay, the evil one. Sorry. The evil one. We see that it is the foundational principle of the democratic system to institute swearing at every gate. That's what the evil one brought. I'm telling you that this system is the Antichrist system, so that's what I'm saying. The system that promotes swearing. Swearing in the banks, swearing affidavit, swearing in the courts, swearing in the marriage in the homes, swearing in the political office. Everything that promotes swearing comes from the evil one. It's an expression of the evil one. This is how you will note the evil one when he comes. God doesn't want you to swear. Why? Because you have submitted to his government. The spirit of truth is inside you to cause you to say yeah, yeah, or no, no. So if you are reading Matthew chapter 5 from verse 33, it's a king that is talking to the nations. That means the part, part of the work of the ministry that the church should do is to express the conditioning of the king in the nation. Establish the conditioning of the king in the nation. That's how to make disciples. So no nation is a disciple when their people are still swearing before they go to their, to their offices. You see the work of the church here? You see the posture of the church? All those things, we must uproot it. That's why if you go to Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 9 to 10. In fact, let's go and read it now. Then you'll see the posture of the church and the work that the church is supposed to do. Jeremiah chapter 1, from verse 9 to 10. Jeremiah 1, 9 to 10. Should I still use the KJV? Read it with the KJV. Jeremiah... Nine, right? One. One, okay. Nine, nine, one, nine to, to ten. ten. Nine to ten. It says, uh, Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nation, over the kingdoms, to root out, to pull them, to destroy, and to throw them to build and to plan. Amen, amen. That is a mission that God has given the church. Mm -hmm. He has put the word in our mouth. He has now set us over. That means we have oversight function over the kingdoms and the nations. You see nations, maybe they are practicing democracy. Nations, he has set the church over nations. Kingdoms, maybe they have submitted to an Oba or they have submitted to an emirate. I have set the church over kingdoms. So there is an authority that the church will be operating in any territory, whether they are practicing a popular 
mandate or they are practicing a kingdom and what are we supposed to do to cut down to root out so we are rooting out the protocols that are sustained the practice antichrist practices in these lands one of which now is swearing the implementation of swearing was not just people coming to talk to us there were principalities powers rulers of darkness of this world spiritual hosts of wickedness in the spirit realm that have manipulated demons to manipulate the people to do the antichrist things the work of the church spiritual warfare is to go and uproot those things in the realms of the spirit that's where you are a soldier of christ that's why you are a soldier of christ you are a soldier of christ so that you in your perfect state your mature state can deal in the prophetic remove the hand of the enemy and then you can now overthrow who overthrows? Is it not military people that overthrow government? Our overthrowing now is not this physical government per se. Our overthrowing is in the realms of the spirit because immediately you have removed their power from that place. My brother, to now administer the rule of Christ will be easy because you see it ends with building and planting. We are building and we are planting new systems that will sustain the livelihood of the people in the land. This was what happened in Acts chapter 19. In fact, go to Acts chapter 19. Go to Acts chapter 19. You want to read from verse like 13 or 14. This was what the, this was what the church did. Read verse 20. Read verse 20. It's verse 20. Okay, okay just one minute. It says, um, so mighty grew the word and it prevailed. And these were ended. After all these things were ended, Paul proposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Acacia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must. I must see Rome. So Paul was in the height of his ministry here, and you see something that says, So mightily grew the world in Ephesus and prevailed. So mightily grew the world. Something happened that the world became most prominent. The world defined the system of Ephesus. The world defined the government of Ephesus. The world defined the institutions in Ephesus. When I mean this, what I mean is that the world defined how people were getting married. The world defined how people were doing business. The world, that means you see the reign of Christ right there, through the hand of Paul. Through the ministry of Paul and the church in Ephesus. The world, how did it happen? Read up to verse 15 and you now see what happened. They drove Paul out of synagogue because of what Paul was saying. What did Paul do? He went to go and hire the hall of Tyrannius. He now stayed in that hall for two years and he was teaching people what? The kingdom of God. Read it. Read um, from verse 15 or thereabouts or 16. Okay. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus, I know Paul, I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leapt, leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. So they fled out of the of that house naked and wounded. Mm. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found the 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew. Okay, that's, okay, the, that's the flow, right? Now, yes. if you go back to verse 8, it says, And he went into his synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. That was the message that Paul was preaching. 
But when divers were hardened and believed not, who were the divers? People in the synagogue, religious people. But speak evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannius. That is Paul. And he continued by the space of two years, so that all that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. The word of the Lord Jesus is the word of a king. That's what I'm saying. The word of the Lord Jesus is the word of the king of kings. God has given us the responsibility to promote his kingdom. The message is kingdom. The message is not success. The message is not um, excellence in life. The message is not purpose. The message is not um, prosperity. The message is kingdom. What is kingdom? The government of God through obedience to the king. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it is in the preaching of the kingdom of God that many miracles now happened. Because if you look at the next one and say miracles by Paul, it's in the miraculous that the word of God is enthroned in the land. You see the character of the people changed. They submitted their idols. They burned their idols. The conditioning of the city changed. The word became preeminent. Pre if you read down to the end of this verse 19, you realize that the silver smiths, the people that were molding artifacts to the goddess of Artemis, they, 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 they came together in a council and said, ever since Saul came, Paul came to this city. No business. No business again. That means the people's taste, preference changed. They say, they say wherefore, that's uh, 38. Wherefore, if this <coughs> I'm trying to read that part. I think I saw it now. Uh, the, 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 the way it talked about. You know what I mean. You use the same text. Yes, I know. If yes. you read it, you will see it. We are talking about the impact of the church. The church had mobilized spiritual warfare. The church had mobilized. All of these things is tied to the preaching of the word. When you are preaching the word, you are mobilizing the people to do some things in the prophetic because those things are things that pertain to the kingdom of God. Spiritual warfare and then ambassadorial duties. We are soldiers of Christ and we are ambassadors for Christ. Who is an ambassador? An emissary that the king sent into the land. So you are going to engage everybody that plays a vital role in the sustainability of cities. You, are, you engage the police and tell them the word of the Lord for policing. This is how God wants us to police. You know, police are law enforcement agents, right? But in Christ's kingdom, it's not law enforcement. We're not enforcing law because where there is law, there is sin. We want to enforce love. So, when the church is actually doing her work, we are seeing a migration of the people from law enforcement, the police, from law enforcement to love enforcement. What to arrest people if they are not doing things that are motivated by love? This was what the church achieved right here. You want to say in that place where the church achieved it? Check Romans 13. Let's go to Romans 13. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. <clears throat> you want to read it by yourself or you want me to read it? Yes. No, I'll read it. Okay. Read from verse 1. From 2. Okay, from 1. Okay. Yes. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Hold on, ever. hold on, hold on. If you don't understand this scripture, you will say it like every Christian says it. Pray for them, Tinobu. It's God that ordained Tinubu. Okay. Pray for Buari. It's God that ordained Buari. In fact, that's what we did for Buari. Even if Buari's government was one of the most corrupt governments in Nigeria. But read what Apostle Paul is saying in Romans 13. This statement was predicated on the fact that the church has, has excelled in Rome. How, how do you know the excellent church? The church that has promoted the word and caused the word to prevail in the land. 
when the word prevails in the land this you can say about the leaders read read keep reading okay so whosoever therefore resisted the power resisted the ordinance of god and they that resist shall receive to themselves termination for rulers are not terror to good work but to evil do you see that without them, do, do, yes do you see the quality of the rulers in in this day My God. Rona cannabis and Tonaka Pasa. The network just disconnected. So I want to reconnect and connect back to him. You see the quality of the rulers of that day? They are not a terror to good works. That means the rulers promoted good works. They were a terror to, to corrupt works, to evil works. Hmm. This is the system that God wants to establish on the earth. This name of this system is called righteousness. It's righteousness. This is exactly where the church was in those days. This is where the church fell from. We were not able to promote the word in its ability to govern the nation. We couldn't, we didn't even see that anymore. We couldn't see it, that the word is actually supposed to be the governing force and the governing influence of the nation. You read Romans chapter 1, you will see that the work of the Apostle is to secure obedience to the faith of Christ in the land. Romans chapter 1, verse 5. Grace and apostleship was given to us to secure obedience. So the church that doesn't secure obedience in the land is not working for God. The church is in self, the incarnation of the beast. Mm. Wow. The incarnation of the beast in that it cannot secure obedience to the teachings of Christ. It cannot secure obedience. You know what we will do? I like the fact that I'm talking to this brother. So I want to see how I can set him up to continue this particular conversation. He's run out of data. So I want to arrange his data. I want to arrange data for him. And then we'll continue the conversation. My brother. You you run out of data. And I'm using my wife data. That's okay. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You will hear from, from me today. By the grace of God. Today. Today. Today, what time? Today, just just give me today. You know that we are still live. Okay, still mm. live. I'm still live. I'm we're live. I'm live on the other side. I will get to you okay. today. You will hear from me today. Mm. So you see, I'll you, send you the list, you know? that's okay. That's fine. You see, waiting with the talk now. Waiting with the talk now. The main issue for the church. This this is so what you are you explaining. In, um, Romans thirteen. So the interpretation of the 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 powers that be ordained by God. What is your interpretation of that? That means because, um, you will find out that whether uh, the politics.
political leadership that they fulfill God's purpose inadvertently. So it starts to say that when we have political leadership, or somebody was sharing your friend, your, that's your good friend, the guy in, uh, I think he's in Port Harcourt or Uyo, he's in Uyo, uh, Apostle, um, Pastor Abel de Mina, you know him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was saying something, there was a very short clip that it was speaking that um, the, where the church missed it is that the church was interpreting political participation uh, um, than saying that God is the one out there, that God has no business in, polit in, in politics, that whatever happens is not God's choice. That God is not that God is not involved in who wins or who loses election. Absolutely, hundred percent. But so 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 when it comes to kingship, no king can become king except God is in line with God's purpose. So God's purpose, in a way, play a role in in what the political leadership turns out. Oh, okay, now, now let's let's look at this now. First of all, the politicians are not kings. Yeah. They are not kings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because because there's still the, the the system of government now is it's not kingdom. Is the is the is democratic. Is democratic. So in in, in a way it it is representative of the old system which is kingship do you know why it is not okay. because they are not following the let's be in spirit and in truth let's still observe the world in its truth they are not following the monarchy mm -hmm. but remember i told you that god has ordained the antichrist to prosper yes and when the antichrist started to prosper he started to see them bring swearing in so when you see democracy, look at democracy from the origin. Democracy is preparing the world for the rule of the lawless one. God has no hand in a democracy. The democracy is the evolution of the system of the beast. But it was, it was not like this for the church in the early times. I'm just showing you now what the church was. When the church was running whatever they were doing, Caesar was king. Caesar was not a the politician. Caesar was practicing socialism, which is the mindset, this, the economic system of kings. So we are going back to socialism after democratic system ebbs away. I'm telling you, the Western system is passing away. The Western system and everything that you have seen is passing away for the rise of the last king. Who is the last king? The Antichrist. You will see him running a system, but now his system is not going to be a human system. The king is going to be artificial intelligence with the evolution of this king. That's when you and I will understand God's place in all of this story. You and I will realize that God's place is a separate government, another kingdom that is looking for control of the earth. God's kingdom that is supposed to be promoted as the the final expression of the government of the earth that's why the church is standing but you see i tried to explain that in god's will there was a time for the dethroning of the church so that the manifestation of the beast will come to its fullest that's what you are seeing today as your democracy democracy gives expression to the third phase of the antichrist system in the world in that system we're seeing to elections and every election was pointing to a messiah democracy did one thing prepare the world for the antichrist what did he do in africa raise people that had self incarnate of the beast false prophets and false christs destroying the nation so that the people will be vulnerable before the beast that's typically what the democracy did. To make the people vulnerable, when the beast comes with his final solution, they will look at the beast and call him God. The final solution of the beast is what they are, they are, they are ruling out now. Because we are entering a new system. COVID-19 is what we should talk about. COVID-19 is the end of the era of the West and the rise of the era of the East. 
What did I say? COVID-19 mm -hmm. marks the end of the era of the West and the rise of the era of the East. How do you know an era has ended? How do you know an era has started? A new era has started. Now, let me, let me tell you something. If you look back at this succession of world empires, you will also you will you will always see that every new empire emerges on the pedestal of knowledge. Uh -huh. When the Babylonian Empire was collapsing, the Medo-Persian Empire was rising, but the Medo-Persian Empire had won the ability to govern the world because the Medo-Persian Empire had new knowledge new knowledge and this new knowledge always found expression in their warfare new knowledge that defined the new civilization it finds expression in warfare so anytime you see a new civilization come <laughs> sir a new king is coming what is the latest civilization that we are looking at today science and technology at it at a nano scale we're looking at the fourth to fifth knowledge wave now, Roman Empire, they didn't fight each other. They were not fighting to gain power, to, to gain prominence. They were evolving. And when they were evolving, you were seeing release of new knowledge. What was the knowledge that COVID-19 released? Nanotechnology is the knowledge of the final knowledge. Science and technology at a nano scale. Nano means a millionth of a millimeter. Very small, your eyes can't see it. But there's science happening there. It was that science that locked down the whole world. One virus condition the world and to fight against this virus they said we need to plug everybody into a new system how do we do it let's give them mandates you heard about the mandates that people were stabbing themselves they were going to government for stabbing government was stabbing people i don't want to say the words here because they will flag my video but that's the way that they want to fight a a virus in its nano scale and this system promotes a new technology that defines how the world is governed. You begin to see after COVID-19, they begin to talk about things as cybersecurity, AI, cybernetics. A new knowledge has come. New government has come. The final government that will be able to govern the earth. Hello, we are looking at the World Economic Forum taking over from the United Nations. Am I making sense to you? Yes. New knowledge, new system, new government, the final phase of the beast. Where is it coming from? Asia. You remember the four phases of the Grecian Empire? Macedonia and Greece, Syria. You have seen Syria with the Roman Empire. Egypt, you have seen it with the American democracy. England and America. The final one is Asia. A coalition of Asian kings. They are rising to govern this world. They are going to promote socialism. And the way the Western system had first world and third world application, you are going to see third world application too. First world application is what we are already seeing. Strong nations that have defined themselves based on the help of AI. The nation that has done mass censorship, AI incorporation into the governance is China. And that's what China is ready to sell to the world. AI will govern the third world. AI will govern Nigeria. That's what Tinubu is coming to do. Tinubu is coming to use AI to change Nigeria. And Nigeria will change indeed. Because the Western people brought Nigeria to where Nigeria is. So that when the Eastern people come, the Eastern people will say they are your messiahs. How will they save the nation? Because the Antichrist is coming to present himself as God. Do you, you understand? He's coming to present himself as messiah. Put AI in their police. If you plug AI into their police, and then the police have cameras, every system is mapped. My brother, you have ended anything for your boys in our streets. You have ended bribery in the police. We are looking at the banking system that is a failure today. Tinubu has come now. You see a lot of they have today. They will find this one to be corrupt. Tomorrow they will find this one to be corrupt. The end of corruption in an economic system is to program AI into the banks and the banking system. That's the end of corruption. That's also the end of terrorism because all those terrorists were busy because people were funding them. 
program AI, how will they send their money? Digital currency. Do you see what I'm saying? They will, use, they will tell you that they will use it to trap corruption. But what are they using it to do? They are using it to present themselves as your Messiah. The final system of the beast is what we're talking about. So I made us understand that the church has a system that we must resort to, we must go back to. Because when the beast is doing his own on that side, the church will be doing her own on this side. The church will be go return to the message of the kingdom. That's why I make bold to say that there's going to be persecution in much of the third world. Persecution against the church. Because when these people from the east come, they will blacklist the West for what the West had, had done over the years. And they will promote their system. And then they will boycott anything that has to do with God. I was talking to a brother yesterday and I began to see two halves in the divided Roman Empire. Two religious halves. One is the Vatican, which has been working with the United Nations ever since. The United Nations have a permanent seat for the Pope. The other one is what many people have not really looked at. The operation of the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Eastern Orthodox Church. That is Vladimir Putin's church. You know, these kings that are rising, they have a religious political flair. They use religion and they use politics. They use religion to mobilize the people, to bind the people together, and they use politics to govern them. That is the Antichrist system. It's a religious political system. It's a falsification of the church system, which is the royal priesthood. Royal king. Priesthood. Um, like religion. The operation of the church, the royal priesthood, is what the Antichrist had formed on his side to form the religious political system. So what we saw was a, was a Western expression of a religious political system that destroyed the world. Because you see the destruction that they have brought upon the world. They brought upon a Western system that is outwardly capitalist, that has ruined the moral value of man, and then ruined the world, ruined the system, ruined the nations. And then behind it, they bring in another religious political system that will come and repair. But the repair that they are doing is by the deployment of AI. I need to repeat what I just said because I was saying something when you went out just now. You are seeing two systems. The Western system that ruined the world. They ruined the world with the propagation of their, their, their democratization system, the democratic system. In their propagation, in the propagation of this system, they ruined the nations because they promoted capitalism. They promoted self. They promoted, in latest, in latest times, the LGBT culture. That brought the nations to its ruin. And then you see these people rising from the East with an offer to repair the offer is to repair what the western people ruined but this offer that they are bringing is capped by trojan horse ai artificial intelligence that's what we are talking about we are going to see the world's technology operating against god's technology god has technology that's what the kingdom of god is about the kingdom of God is about the deployment of God's technology for world government. And we're looking at the, the, the technology that we... That I we, went out. I think my, my network is a bit unstable. Yes, it's unstable. I was talking about technology just now. I was talking about technology. Uh -huh. Because in, in the new kingdom, you are going to see new knowledge. With the new knowledge, you are going to see new technology. With the new technology, you are going to see new civilization we are going to see the dominance of the world is the earth under the dominance of a new tech so as the 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 world is growing in its deployment of technology the church should also be deployed be growing in her perfecting be getting more mature so in our maturity we can now deploy god's technology because ultimately technology is for world government Technology is for world dominion. Anytime you see technology rising, 
you are seeing a, a people rise in their in their ability to dominate the earth i want to end this live on this note but i really i really want to capture this particular tech because it ultimately ends with the, the final technology on the earth who is going to wield it who is going to demonstrate it the final technology of the earth the earth is a technology that the earth will come under who will define it is it the seed of the serpent is it the tears or is it the seed of the woman which is the wheat you see there's a world civilization that is wheat there's also a world civilization that is tear who is going to define the civilization of the world it's very important we talk about these things very important we talk about these things The wheat world civilization and the tear world civilization. Everything is tied to knowledge. <laughs> Everything is tied to knowledge. The tear world civilization is tied to knowledge. The wheat world civilization is tied to knowledge. Every knowledge that you are laying hold on, including most especially the knowledge of God, is actually supposed to help us participate with the process of wielding the new the new technology that we create the new tech the new civilization that should define the conditioning of the earth that's why in hebrews chapter 2 the writer of that book is telling us that god did not give the world to come to angels he gave the world to come to us to preach so the message of the kingdom is about the world to come the world that will be produced by the technology that God has released with his son. With the knowledge of the son is a technology that will define the government of the earth. When God was releasing the knowledge of his son, the message of the kingdom, God was releasing the technology that will define the government of the new earth. So he needs us to preach it to this earth so that we can prepare the people of this earth, the nations of this earth for a place in the world to come. So our message is not a message that helps you fit into the world, which is the case with many Christians today. The message that is preached in much of Christianity, it causes people to be fit into the world. You see, okay. um, brother Dan, God bless you. Eh? I, ha I have to track back a bit because I, I continue talking. I'm in a flow. As me and you, they talk. I enter what I call mantle mode. Mantle mode now, the operation where Christ they use for the world. When Christ they ministry is actually in mantle mode. So anybody in Christ is able to enter this mode of operation. <laughs> and as we enter this this realm, the enemy also is afraid because of the things that we have been ordained to do in the realm. Very important. So what we must do is to... I think what we should do now is to round off and then I'll come, I'll come back in a, in a short moment. I'll come back in a moment with light. We want to talk about the technology. We want to talk about the technology. It's mantle against mantle. Wisdom against wisdom. Knowledge against knowledge. Tech against tech. So I will have us see the technology that God has released ultimately. And I will do that in a moment. Till I see you again, it's Peter here. Shalom. I'll see you shortly. I'm coming back shortly. Bye now.